Hello all, welcome to the Windows API exploitation recipes for Red and Blue Teams course at Pentester Academy. Now in the last video, we saw how we could go ahead and check for uh, whether we can get privileges, right, based on what is available in the token uh, at runtime. Now in this video, we will look at how we can go ahead and automatically request elevation using an API called shell execute ex. So what was the key problem in the last video, right? Our program starts and of course it detects if it has all the privileges required in order to perform its operation. Now, in this case, of course, it is the ability to list details about different processes running on the system. Now, uh, if it does not have the right privileges, the program just goes ahead and exits and tells us to run it using an elevated prompt. Now, why not have the program automatically restart itself and request elevation. This is really what we are trying to do in this video. Now it is important to note that this can also be achieved using manifest files. And if you specify run as as an admin in the manifest file, then the very first time the program is being invoked, you will get your USC prompt, right? Uh, we have covered manifest files in the network pen testing video series. And because there isn't much to do programmatically, even though in Visual Studio you could mention them, uh, I might take it up later, right? I, I personally prefer the API technique. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, we just basically relaunch ourselves, now requesting for elevation. Now, this can be done using the shell execute or the shell execute ex, either one of these two. APIs. Now, shell execute ex, uh, you know, basically just accepts one input, which is also populated after the function runs. Uh, and that is a shell execute info structure. Now, here is the structure. Now, the key components here is basically the LP verb. Let's actually, let's actually go to the documentation. Okay, here we are. Now, there are some parameters I've, I've filled in default values. Have a look at it. Uh, they do not have much of a security bearing. But the key thing here is really the work parameter, which is of interest to us. Here it is, right? So what does shell execute ex do? It actually allows us to perform different operations on a specified file. Now, interestingly, what we might be able to use in other scenarios is that shell execute ex can delegate execution to shell extensions, right? We'll talk about this much, much later in the series and how this can be used in many cases to our advantage. But now coming back, putting it very simply, we can go ahead and run an exe using shell execute ex. Of course, we need to go ahead and tell shell execute ex to run this as someone. Now that is really where the verb comes in. So if you will notice right now, we see edit, explore, find, open, print properties. And it just says the following verbs are commonly used. This is not an exhaustive list of verbs. Interestingly, uh, the place where I found a complete example is a blog post on MSDN, which specifically says you pass run as as the verb, right? There could be other places, but uh, this was the one where I really, you know, found a full and complete easy example. Years back when I was looking at it, I, I still use it for all the real world classes we teach. So there we go, run as. So now let's go into the code. Now, this program is exactly 
the way it looked like in the last video. The key change here is I've just added a little function call called relaunch self. Now this happens when the SE debug privilege check ends up failing, right? So which means it isn't available in the token and hence we cannot enable it. Now let's look at relaunch self. This is documented in relaunch.h, right? So of course we need to go ahead and relaunch ourselves. Now, how do we know the path to the executable uh, which was used to run us? Now there is a little trick here. We can actually use get module file name. This is an interesting function. And all we have to do is pass the module handle. Interestingly, it actually says that if this parameter is null, get module file name retrieves the path of the executable file of the current process. This is exactly what we need as one of the inputs to shell execute ex. Right? So let's go back here. We call get module file name and we actually end up getting the full file path itself. And that is really what we use in LP file, right? An LP verb is run as, that's it. Most of the others are just default values. Uh, let me go ahead and build this. Now, while you are playing around with this, keep in mind that when you're on a 64 bit system, generally the different attacks and everything we are discussing make sure that you end up compiling your code into a 64-bit binary, right? In many cases, 32-bit binaries aren't, aren't allowed to do something with 64-bit processes. Just keep that in mind. There's no need for us to go into the nuances of that. Uh, it's much better just to run as a 64-bit executable. Okay, so now let's actually go into this directory. Let's go into this directory. Now in the very first iteration, I'm going to just open up a command prompt without running it as an admin, right? So let's go in. And now let me try running this. So see what happens. Let's go ahead, run it. The moment we run it, we detect that we are not having the privileges required and hence we end up relaunching ourselves. Now keep in mind that currently the old instance is also running. Right, so as soon as I press yes, the previous instance would go ahead and anyway exit after this uh, API call while this new instance ends up running with elevation and which of course basically has the right privileges, which is the SC debug one in this case. And there you go, right? If we now go up, we can clearly see that SC debug privilege was available and enabled and we basically come back to where we are before. While in this case, this was unavailable, right? Now keep in mind, this, this is not exiting the older process immediately, right? It only exits after this one ends up getting launched. So that is important for you to note. Uh, let's go back. And, and that's all there is to it. That's it. Uh, this is extremely handy. Why? Because a lot of times you may be creating many of these demo programs, handing it over to people. Uh, certain privileges might be required. They might end up running it from an you know, low privilege prompt and nothing would end up happening, right? So this forces to be notified. Uh, what happens when we run this from an admin prompt? Let's actually go back in here. And by the way, guys, one another thing I would uh, recommend uh, from a red teaming perspective is to get a code signing certificate, right? 
uh, that makes it extremely simple for you to sign your executables and you could even you know get a very convincing looking name uh, and make the task of the blue team guys more difficult right let's actually go in here and copy this out okay don't know why the copy paste isn't working there we go Now look at what happens when we run it from an admin prompt, right? The assumption of course is that at this point the SE debug privilege is available uh, and there you go. It just uh, runs beautifully, right? We, we don't get any request for elevation at all, which is exactly the behavior we want, right? If everything is good, it should run. Uh, if we do not have the privilege, then request. That's it. So that's all I have for this video. Hope you enjoyed this one and you use shell execute and shell execute ex. I've shown the ex version. Uh, the plain shell execute one is also something which you can use much more easier to invoke uh, much fewer options, right? So you can try and play with that as well. That's all guys. If you're enjoying your time at Pentester Academy, then please recommend us to your friends and colleagues. Thank you.